This next one will be very exciting. Stay in your seats. Uh, they've all been exciting so far, but uh, I think you'll really enjoy this next one also. Jay Lowell is chief engineer of Boeing's Disruptive Computing Network and Sensors Group, DCNN as they call it. And this group leverages core technologies in quantum communications, computing, and sensing, high performance computing, advanced networking to develop computing and communication solutions for advanced commercial and government aerospace applications. Jay is an internationally recognized expert in systems engineering of electromagnetic or electro-optic systems. He's also a senior technical fellow who works across Boeing's businesses to develop the research and development investment strategy for the many electrical and electronic systems in Boeing products. Please welcome Jay as he shares the latest exciting developments at Boeing. So I've been out on this stage a couple of times now and most of the time I get up here and talk about um, some of the advancements that we've made and the progress we've made in our portfolio of our diverse portfolio of quantum technology development activities and research. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, today I want to talk about and I want to answer a couple of the hardest questions there are about the future of quantum technology research. So the first of those questions is what is the future of quantum technology? Where is where does this journey that we're on and the development of all of these quantum technologies that people are talking about, where does it go? Where is it going to end? What is it going to look like? Well, I think the future of quantum technology, well, when, you, when you've worked in quantum technology as long as I have, and I have the gray hairs on my beard to show it, um, you start to see the trends. You back away from the announcements, from the roadmaps, from all of the news of the day, and you look at these things and you see a meta trend emerging, and you see where all of this is pointing, and all of this is pointing towards a global, connected quantum network connecting quantum sensors and quantum computers. That's where all of this work is inevitably going to end. And it has to, because it's the way we extract the maximum value out of all of this technology development work that we're doing. It's the way we harness the collective power of this work. So now that we've answered that question, the next question is a, kind of becomes obvious to ask, but difficult to answer. And that is, how do we bring that future to life? Well, our philosophy at Boeing is you take that journey where you want to go, and you look backwards, and you figure out, what's the biggest step I can take to get me there? And so we've looked around, and we've said, What's the biggest step we can take? That's what I'm here to talk about today. What we're going to do is break that down. So to break that down, we want to connect all of these quantum sensors and computers together. To do that, we need to be able to transport quantum information anywhere in the world. And if we want to transport quantum information, we have to be able to use quantum repeaters to do that, which means we need to be able to swap entanglement. That's the core engine that drives quantum repeaters. If we can't do that, we have no ability to have a global network. And anywhere in the world means we need to have the links that are long enough to reach anywhere in the world, even if we're using those repeaters. That means we're going to be using space-based links. That leads us to what we are doing. We want to announce today that we're launching Q4S, the world's first quantum entanglement swapping demonstration on board a satellite. So let me tell you a little bit more about it, show you a little bit more about it. Quantum technology is one of the most promising advancements humanity has ever embarked on. Boeing is making a big bet on quantum, launching a satellite called Q4S. A first of its kind experiment Q4S will attempt quantum entanglement swapping on orbit. Entanglement swapping relies on quantum teleportation, creating a shared state between particles that have never interacted. 
The process requires precision engineering to stabilize and sustain these states in a way that was previously thought to be impractical, if not impossible. This year-long study, set for launch in 2026, promises to unlock incredible potential, helping researchers understand how entanglement swapping behaves in space. Imagine a future where quantum technology enhances how we connect, protect, and explore the world and beyond. Our vision is to create an interconnected quantum network, revolutionizing global information sharing, including novel ways of securing our data and the ability to sense the faintest effects on Earth and in space, from climate patterns to asteroids. Boeing is doing much more than participating in quantum research. We are leading the way to operationalize and scale quantum technologies for global applications. We're committed to taking this step, doing what hasn't been done before. By taking on the challenge of entanglement swapping in space, we are taking a critical step towards a future with unimaginable possibilities. So as we saw in the video, we're launching Q4S in 2026. We have a design life of about a year and we'll put this satellite in a sun synchronous orbit in order to generate enough power to do uh, to do all the things that we have to do in space. We will be demonstrating quantum entanglement swapping in a space environment, controlling it remotely. No person will be involved directly in the, in the operation of this activity. It will all be automated and controlled by software. Additionally, we'll be evaluating components for their ability to behave and function properly in the kind, in the kind of environment that we have on orbit. So let me back up a little bit because I'd lose my uh, credentials as a physicist if, uh, if I didn't try to explain this protocol to you. So let me explain quantum entanglement swapping very briefly. For those of us who don't know, what we want to do in entanglement swapping is we want to connect quantum information from two different things, uh, from two different particles. We're going to start off by creating two pairs of entangled photons. We're doing that by pumping a laser through nonlinear optical crystals, each of which creates an entangled pair of photons. We're then going to select one photon from each of those pairs, and we're going to interact them on a beam splitter. That beam splitter, if those, quantum, those photons are in the proper state, those photons will become entanglement, entangled. We check whether that entanglement has happened by looking at clicks on those detectors. When those pairs are entangled properly, that entanglement now transfers the entanglement of those two central photons with the two outermost photons, thereby swapping the entanglement. This allows us to essentially repeat or extend the range of a quantum link far beyond we can, the way we can with a single photon. So in order to do, let me, enough about the science, now let's talk about the engineering that we have to do to go make this happen. This starts with our laboratory test bed. That laboratory test bed has been designed and built to allow us to characterize all of the underlying components that are necessary to do this on orbit. We get detailed understanding, such as the photon spatial uh, profile that you see there for our, in, for our single photon source. We then use those profiles as inputs to a system level model to show that we understand how the entire system will behave under various input conditions. We are also taking data with that, such as the entanglement swap fidelity uh, plot you see there on the right, that we can then validate and verify against that system model, given inputs of what we know the components will produce over the range of conditions. This gives us a lot of confidence that we know exactly what we need to do to make entanglement swapping work wherever we want to make it work. The unfortunate thing is we can't take our laboratory test bed and fly it. It's just far too large, and no lab tables really are a pain in the butt to move. So instead, what we've designed is a first-of-its-kind, compact, less than 10-liter payload package. That payload package will house everything that we need to do the experiment in a small, compact package. But it's not enough just to package everything small. We actually have to show that it will survive the environment that it's going to be in. So we put that package and all of its components and all of the subsystems and all of the assemblies 
in environmental test chambers that will run them through temperature profiles at under vacuum and show that they not just work in a laboratory environment, but they work in an environment representative of the satellite that they're going to be launched on. And the interesting thing is each of those components may have a very different thermal environment that it sees. We actually, our thermal modeling is so sophisticated that we have detailed temperature profiles for each of the components because we've done thermal modeling of the entire payload package and the entire environment. We then put all this together with systems, software, and ground support, all the power, all the communications that are necessary to make this thing work so that we can have 24-7 operations, run this experiment over the entire lifetime of a year, downloading data, analyzing that data, and eventually publishing for peer review to show that we've done what we set out to do. So as you can tell, we are very excited about the work that we've been doing. Um, I don't have enough time to talk about all the work that we've been doing over the past few years to get us to this point or the next couple of years, but I have my team here. They're all sitting down here up front. Um, Jennifer Ellis, Shen Wing Sui, and um, Julie Fisher and Bogdan Nekuleis. I urge you to seek them out during the rest of the conference and talk to them. They can tell you as much or more about this experiment than I can and help answer your questions about this exciting opportunity that we have. We are very excited about this because we feel this Q4S mission points the way and takes us closer to that inevitable future of a globally connected quantum network. A quantum network that is connecting quantum sensors to allow us to measure things with much fainter and much higher precision than we can today. A quantum network that allows us to connect distant quantum computers allowing calculations and computations that are unimaginable or unthinkable today. A quantum network that allows us to develop future applications and new ways to secure data transmission over long distances. A quantum network, in the end, powered by Boeing. Thank you, and uh, we look forward to answering your questions during the rest of the conference. <laughs>